In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will learn about the energy stored in the magnetic field BH curve and the comparison between the electric circuits and magnetic circuits. We know that the energy is required only to raise the water to a certain height, say H, but it's not required to keep the water to that height. The supplied energy gets converted into potential energy that holds the water to that height. Similarly, the energy is required to establish the magnetic field into the magnetic circuit, but it is not required to maintain it. Consider a magnetic circuit. Initially, switch S is open. Hence, current through the solenoid is zero. Once the switch is closed, the current starts to flow. Let's assume that it takes time dt to raise from zero to some value i. As the current changes, the flux linked with the coil also changes and induces the EMF equal to minus L into di by dt. This minus sign indicates that the EMF induced opposes the increase in the current. To overcome this opposition, the external source supplies the energy. This energy establishes the magnetic field as the current reaches its peak value. After this point, the current remains constant and no EMF induces in the circuit. Hence, no energy is required to maintain the developed flux. Let's open the switch S again. The current now starts to decrease, which changes the flux and EMF is induced again. This EMF opposes the cause producing it, which is the decreasing current. That is, it acts as a source and tries to keep the current constant. Hence, the energy is stored when the current increases and is returned back to the supply when the field collapses. Let's derive an expression for the energy stored in a magnetic field. The induced EMF is given by the equation E equals minus L into dI by dt. This EMF opposes the supply voltage, hence V equals minus E. Substituting the value of E, we get V equals L into dI by dt. The power, the product of voltage into current. Substituting the value of V, we get the power equals L into dI by dt into I and the energy of the power supplied in a given time. Thus, E equals L brackets dI into I. This energy is for current dI, but actual current changes from 0 to I. Thus, we carry out the integration from 0 to I, substituting the limits of integration. We get the expression for the energy as E equals half into L into I square and the unit is joules. Let's study the hysteresis loop or BH curve. The term hysteresis was coined around 1890 by Sir James Alfred Ewing to describe the behavior of magnetic materials and is derived from an ancient Greek word meaning deficiency or lagging behind. Hey! It's time to concentrate now. Thus, BH curve determines the relationship between magnetic flux, density B, and magnetic field, strength H. Starting with an unmagnetized core, both B and H will be at zero, point zero, on the magnetization curve. If the magnetization current, I, is increased in a positive direction to some value, the flux density B increases linearly with the magnetic field strength H as shown by the curve from point zero to point A as it heads towards saturation. At saturation, as the current in the coil reduces to zero, the magnetic field around the core also reduces to zero, but the magnetic flux does not reach to zero due to the residual magnetism present within the core and this is shown on the curve from point A to point B. To reduce the flux density at point B to zero, we need to reverse the current flowing through the coil. The magnetizing force which must be applied to null the residual flux density is called coercive force. This coercive force reverses the magnetic field till it reduces to zero at point C. An increase in the reverse current causes the core to be magnetized in the opposite direction. And increasing this magnetization current will cause the core to reach the negative saturation point D on the cure which is symmetrical to point B. If the magnetizing current is reduced again to zero, the residual magnetism present in the core will be equal to the previous value but in reverse at point E. Again, 
reversing the current flowing through the coil into a positive direction will cause the magnetic flux to reach zero point f on the curve and it again reaches saturation at point a then the bh curve follows the path of a b c d e f a as the magnetizing current flowing through the coil alternates between a positive and negative value such as the cycle of an ac voltage this path is called as magnetic hysteresis loop for soft iron ferrite materials the hysteresis curve is very narrow and for hard iron ferrite materials the curve is very broad seriously pay attention this is important let's see the comparison between the electric circuits and magnetic circuits for electric circuits the energy is required to maintain the flow of current but for magnetic circuits the energy is only required to establish the flux and not to maintain it electric lines of flux are not closed they start on a positive charge and end on a negative charge magnetic lines of forces are closed as they start at north pole and end at north pole again flowing through the south pole the resistance and the conductivity of electric circuits are independent of current density the reluctance permeance and permeability are dependent on flux density many materials like air resin pvc can be used as insulators for electric circuits there is no insulating material for flux as it can pass through air also let's have a quick review for magnetic circuits the energy is only required to establish the magnetic field and not to maintain it we get the expression for the energy as e equals half into l into i square and the unit is joules bh curve determines the relationship between magnetic flux density b and magnetic field strength h as the current in the coil changes in positive or negative direction